Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, everyone else, welcome to another video from the Off Grid Garage. As I promised you in one of the last videos, we will do some hands-on work again today. Nothing theoretical. I would like to put the console back on TOD here. So if you don't know what that is, I well, built this myself quite a while back. I had solar panels connected to each of these strings here. So a negative, positive and an on-off switch for each string. I had uh, three different solar panels on top of the roof. These were like 22 volt panels, so I could put them in series or parallel. And this was a large 220 watt panel, 34 volts. And none of them exist on the roof anymore because we have upgraded with our stage two now. And now they are sitting here in my garage. These are the two 40 watt panels, 22 volts each. And we will install them again in a later video. I've, I found a good space here on the garage for these two panels. I will not install the 220 watt panel anymore because I've never used it actually. These ones were totally fine to do testing with solar charge controllers here or charge my tractor battery and do all kind of stuff. But the 220 watt panel, I actually never used it here. So. I'm not putting this one back on the roof. I would like to use this string here for something else. You need to, you need to, you need to get in here under Andy's workbench. Yeah, I think this is the cable for this console. And we've got two other strings here, positive, negative, for each of the other strings, which we will connect to yeah, here they are, which we will connect back to the solar panels then at a later stage. So this is a four millimeter cable here actually, which is okay. That is quite good. But it is not long enough for my purpose. It was just enough to go from here all the way up to the roof. But now I want to connect these two cables all the way back here. And I've got a spare hole here because I needed the clamp. <laughs> I was running out of stock of clamp, so I took this one away. We'll feed both cables through here and then connect them both to the bus bar here with a fuse. We will have battery power on these two terminals there, there on the workbench. And what I will do is I will just, I will just take one of these fuses here and put them in between. We cannot utilize the 50 volt of the battery here unfused. And I don't want to install any circuit breakers here or something like this, so we just go with a fuse. Um, unfortunately, this is only uh, probably a two millimeter cable, maybe only 1.5 actually. This is what I have at the moment, so we use that. Because my thought about this is if I have positive and negative of my battery directly here and can turn this on and off with a switch here, I can use these two, two solar panels. And then when we test solar charge controllers, for example, I can just connect this to my battery here and we can simulate all kinds of scenarios then. So these two will be the 40 watt panels again and this one will be my battery. And I've got some ducting here and also heaps of clans. Man, we've got a brand new hardware store just around the corner now, so it's only five minutes away instead of 15 minutes before. As I said before, it's a developing country. It develops. So I can get all my electrical stuff now right away. If, I, if I'm running out of stock or something, I just go over there, five minute drive and get what I need and I'm back here in the garage in no time and can continue my work. Well, before I had to plan everything, it was half a day trip to go to the hardware store and I had always a long list. <laughs> okay, let's just have a look here behind the workbench. I can see the cables going in there. And is there space? Oh, there's no space. Okay, I need to go through one of these gaps there. This one and go into this beam. Yeah, this is the metal beam you just saw here and I'm using this as a cable tray now, which is perfect for that. So we will come along here 
and then just jump into the enclosure and connect them to the bus bar. Okay, let's do the positive side first. And we have to get this fuse here in between somewhere. So probably we'll use this little screw here. See, this is the connection for our fan system here. The 48 volt supply to the fans. And I've got another possibility down here to connect another load. So I've got them cut in different lengths because on the positive side there will be the um, the fuse holder still and then at the end they've got the same length again okay let's do the positive first positive was the shorter cable ah, I'm already getting confused And I also bought some new tips for my soldering iron after 30 years. First time replacement. So I've now marked the positive with a red heat shrink and bundled it together with the negative cable. Got some isolation tape here over the tip and hopefully I can get it through the conduit now. This is always the challenge. Yeah. Up until here, but that was expected. Oh, come on, camera. Yeah, I think I have to. Oh, it's already here. <laughs> That's amazing. And there's our positive. Nice. Oh, that was quick and easy. I thought this will be the main problem, but because it's fairly flat here, it goes through quickly and smoothly. Well, nice. Okay, I'll fix this up later. It was too hot and now my heat shrink is already shrunk <laughs> okay yeah, this did not work it is mostly covered but I just put some insulation tape around it uh, I should have let it cool it down a little bit and just the irrigation pump kicked in and the inverter oh god half a heart attack all right, we've got the screw now on here on the ring terminal and this is now connected directly to the bus bar of our positive feed here. Battery is coming down from here, solar charge controllers from there and here it goes to the inverter. So this is all very secure. I haven't got, this, um, I haven't got a fuse in here yet, so there's no voltage on the rest of the cable before we are finished with our installation here. Let me now put the cover back on and then we go to the other side so I always make sure I've got only one bus bar uncovered not both at the same time okay we do the same here and here comes our negative just 
is testing. <laughs> There's no short on the cable. I uh, should have gone the other way actually. Let me fix that. Yeah, that is better. So now our connection is under the big one here for the solar charge controller. That is a lot better. I like this bus bar here really. It's nice. Okay, this is all nice and secured now. Well, not nice, but secured. Push these cables back just a bit. Yep, this one is waiting for the fuse and I probably put this um, spiral wrap here around these two cables to keep them together here in the middle of the bus bar. All right, let's put a fuse in. Okay, this is a 5 amp fuse I'm having here and this should be perfectly fine for our usage. That gives me around 250 watts of power from the battery or into the battery. So if not I can always increase to 7.5 amps or so but this one should be fine to start with. Uh, there's no short. It's good the fuse is not blowing straight away. Um, not sure if I can get this done with one hand. No I can't. Yeah definitely a job for two hands. All right this cover back on. This is all fully insulated. I'll organize this spiral wrap here later on. Maybe a little bit here as well going into the duct so it's totally covered. And that's pretty much it. That concludes our work here on the bus bars inside the electrical cabinet. And now the final part should be measuring the voltage. Okay, that is nothing. I'm going to turn it on. I've got 53.4 volts on the battery. Yay! I've got my console working. I'm so glad. Nice! So, I can now do these um, silly things like hooking up our new power supply. 54.6 volts. Having connected both to the positive and negative of our just installed connection to our battery in the switchboard. And if we turn this one on, we can actually charge our battery now. Uh, wait, this power is actually coming from the same battery this one now charges. How does, how does that work? Okay, we are now pushing 5 amps into our battery. Let's do a quick control check here. Come on. Yeah, 5 amps going through our thin cable to the bus bar into the inverter and battery. Well, most of it goes into the inverter because the inverter is powering our power supply, <laughs> which charges our battery. Yeah, you can see this here. There's almost no power going into the battery actually. There's still solar turned on, 90 and 100 watts. So these 5 amps here going directly into the inverter, converting energy to produce 5 amps. <laughs> this is so silly. Now you can see 6.7 amps going into the battery and not in the inverter anymore. I've just connected the power supply to the Blue Yeti. And now the power comes from a different source, of course, and we charge the battery now. From this battery, 360, 70 watts. It claims 501. Yeah, around 5 amp going from here into the battery. Cool. That seems to work. Can you, can you smell that? Is this our... And the fan actually t just turned on here. So I can confirm the fan is running on this one. Got it running for about 20 minutes now. On 3 amps it was. 
I was not going to charge the battery with this device here actually. That is just a silly test. Well, at the moment the power is coming from the Blue Eddy, so it's actually working, it's charging the battery. Yep, definitely fan comes on and turns off again when it cools down. So the active cooling is working. Just a bit of an update on this device, right? Okay, I've now wrapped the cables around there and a little bit here and a little bit here going into the conduit. So they are staying together now. That's just fine. Well, we have to think about redesigning this area again here when the new battery comes. Definitely, but this is something for a different video. <laughs> okay, so we have now access to our battery here directly through the positive and negative terminal. Have a little switch in between and can charge and discharge whatever experiment I'm doing here on my workbench. That is great. I like it. All right, folks. So far, this short video from today. As always, thank you for watching. Thanks for all your support here on the channel. Thanks for the beer donations. And stay charged and safe. And we shall see us again in the next video coming out very soon. All right, guys. Thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye.